Hey guys, are you ready for another top 10? Yes, I know you are. This time, once again, the Game Boy Advance. So a couple of weeks ago I made the top 10 hidden gems for this video, and now it's, as usual, the most unknown JRPG that I considered for this console. And uh, I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, wow, this is a great game, uh, this should have been on the Hidden Gems video, or maybe I consider this a Hidden Gem video, a uh, Hidden Gem, or uh, oh, this game is not that unknown, you know, all those debates, as usual, in the comment section below, please. So we can start a debate, exchange ideas, you know, talk about it. That's the purpose of this channel, and that's the purpose of videos like this. So, um, with nothing else to say with that, let's begin. Number 10, Shining Soul. Shining Soul, obviously from the Shining series, is not a spin-off as many people will think. It's actually considered as a reboot of the series. Uh, when you think about this series, you remember those cool turn-based or strategy RPGs from the Genesis, correct? Well, this is an action RPG for the Game Boy Advance, and since most of the titles that came after it were action RPGs, it kinda makes sense, but at the same time, it doesn't. In fact, there are those who see this, ga this game as an insult to the series. They say it's terrible, with lack of innovation, poor battle mechanics, boring plot and repetitive gameplay. In other words, nothing deserving or associated with the word reboot. In my opinion, it's an okay game. Not terrible, just mediocre, but in a good sense. I mean, I wouldn't play this for several hours in a row, or nor would I do it for consecutive days until I finish it, but I will come back to it from time to time. Yeah. Or not. The point is that even though some people hate it, there are those who like it. So it's a matter of perspective. And there's a sequel. Shining Soul 2. You will expect some kind of improvement or innovation from the lame video game we saw before to this, and even though there were some details that were actually better, the game just keeps feeling in the same monotonous way. For starters, there was now nine different types of characters to choose from, whereas in the previous one there were only four. This obviously gave the player a chance to experience the game in a new way, but no matter how, which character you choose, the story remains the same. I did enjoy this one a little better than the other, but somehow I had lots of troubles adapting to certain characters like all the magic type ones. Maybe I got used to the terrible pseudo hack and slash system the previous game had, and I wanted to try something different. Nevertheless, it's more fun when you finally get the gist of these characters, but that doesn't really change much of the gameplay overall. It's still a little boring, repetitive and uninspiring. Unknown? Well, to start with, the Shining series has always been a little underground, some titles even underrated, and considering the first reviews of the first game were terrible, it's no surprise its sequel went under the shadows. Next is Boktai. The sun is in your hands. Yeah, by Hideo Kojima. This is a controversy actually, since the RPG elements present in this game are nothing but a handful. But I'll explain that situation in a future video. Games like, that look like RPGs, but are not. Yeah. Well, let me explain how this game works. It's a fun action adventure in which you control a boy that has this sort of laser gun that uses the power of the real sun to work. Yes, you heard that right. The real sun. You literally had back then to play the damn game under the sun just to recharge your gun. Many people saw this as an excellent idea. But what if you were from Latin America or Africa? How the fuck were you supposed to enjoy playing a damn game under the sun? In any case, you can emulate this game nowadays and use some keys to recharge your gun. The game, as you saw, also includes those stealth elements where you have to hide from your enemies in order to reach certain areas. That was very Kojima style, I should say. It's a fun game. However, the Poktai 2 Solar Boy Django was even better. I know the gameplay and graphics look exactly the same, but at least this is what I could call a role-playing video game. In any case, Boktai 2 plays much like its predecessor. 
with the same ideas of recharging your gun under the sunlight and using stealth elements to hide away from your enemies and pass by unnoticed. But incorporating certain things like towns, characters and fun puzzles was perhaps what made me say that this sequel was better than the first game. However, I don't think these two games are hidden gems. They have their own bag of problems, like the repetitive gameplay or the tedious recharging of your gun. And if we take into consideration that at least the first game, in my opinion, shouldn't be exactly called an RPG, kinda made me leave them away from the hidden gems video. Nevertheless, they're fun games, and due to their curious and strange ideas, you might be attracted to play them. Do so because despite their flaws, they are quite original. There was actually a third game for the Game Boy Advance also, but it never made it outside Japan. Next is Dokapon Monster Hunter. Yeah, what a name, huh? Monster Hunter. Ha! Huh. Well, guess what? This game came out before the famous RPG franchise. The first Monster Hunter came out in 2004. This miserable, boring, lame-ass, stupidly atrocity came out in 2001. But I'm not here to talk about the Monster Hunter series. I'm here to talk about this miserable, boring, lame-ass... Yeah, Dokapon. Well, all Dokapons are pretty much unknown in the gaming world. Probably the only slightly popular ones will be the Wii, which is a port from the PS2 version, and the DS titles but the Dish GVA one could be actually the first Dokapon brought to us outside Japan. The Game Boy Color version never made it. E even if you go to Wikipedia to find out more ab about these games, you'll find several highly mediocre articles. So yep, pretty unknown. Now, I know you want me to explain why I insulted this game. Well, it's a dungeon crawler with tons of monsters, a turn-based battle system that uses a rock-paper-scissors principle. Most enemies are extremely easy, while the bosses are extremely hard. Yeah, difficulty spikes. You might want to skip this game. It's very mediocre. Super Robo Tyson original generation, this game, unlike the others, might be actually a hidden gem. Plus, it's a strategy RPG, and you know I'm a big fan of those. You get to choose between two characters, and each one has their own plotline. You might be thinking that these games aren't really unknown, but I have only met one single person in my entire life that has heard of them. Not even played them, no, just heard of them. I think the Super Robot Wars franchise, or Super Robot Tyson as it's also known, it's a very solid niche that many people, especially in Japan, are familiar with. It's actually a very gigantic world of video games that have been released for almost every single damn console ever. But only three have been internationally released, the original generation games for the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS. Of course, nowadays there are tons of fan translations for tons of games from this franchise, so having only three of them officially released across the world might be the reason why they are fairly unknown. Now, are they good? Yes, they are. They are fantastic strategy RPGs. I'm just not really a fan of mechas, so these two titles for the Game Boy Advance are games that I enjoyed, but only to some extent. Well, I barely said anything about the games themselves, so let's take this sequel to give that approach. They're obviously tactical RPGs, and to me the main feature is not the use of mechas, but the battle screens. The animations when they attack an enemy or receive damage. As you can see, they're pretty epic. However, even if that's something that might look cool, it can be a little tiresome at times. Battles last way longer than usual mainly because of this aspect. This not only happens on certain battles against certain enemies, but literally all the time. They're awesome either way, but damn, just look how long it takes. Other than that, it's a good game. Another thing that I haven't mentioned is that most of these games are supposed to be crossovers from several other games from the fran same franchise. And in this second game, there's no story and or character selection anymore but instead a story branch every now and then during the story. In terms of gameplay, they're both decent enough. I'm not sure which one is better than the other, but if you're free to share your opinion if you already play them. I like them both. Number 3, Soy's Legacy. I'm showing both the Japanese and American covers just so you, so you can see that they have different names. 
The reason might be because the first Soit Saga was never released outside Japan. But that's not the only stupidity the localization team did. The game is full of grammar mistakes and poorly translated dialogues that make some parts of the story senseless at times. In terms of gameplay, they change nothing, thankfully, so it can be played exactly as it is in Japan. It's a turn-based RPG with random encounters. Here, however, we have the same problem as the Super Robot Tyson games. Look how long it takes for all the enemies to attack you first, with their respective animations. <sighs> it's terrible. But hey, the game itself is not that bad. In fact, it's not even bad, at least not in my opinion. It's actually somewhat good, average for so to say. Like, dare I say, most, most Soits video games. I mean, all of them are very unknown to start with because the series itself is not even that known outside Japan. In any case, I recommend this game only if you're looking for something cool to just pass the time. Number 2, Robopon 2. There's two of them, two versions just like any other Pokemon clone. The first thing you probably noticed was that they're both called Robopon 2. That's because the first Robopon was released for the Game Boy Color in three versions, but only one of them was released outside Japan. Sadly, none of them exist in Europe. So these two Pokemon games are very, very unknown. Oh, sorry, Pokemon clones. But you know what? I don't know. I mean, the games do have some Pokemon elements here and there, but I think the main stuff is technically original. You customize your robots and have them fight in turn-based battles against other people's robots. That could be the one and only great aspect of, of the game. Having the robots you created to fight and then watch them grow. Other than that, like in terms of story for example, Robopon is actually quite average. Just a normal RPG. The only problem I see is that damn random encounter rate which can sometimes put you in a bad mood because it's not that good of a game to begin with. However, it's still good enough to, play, to keep playing it every once in a while, despite that tedious flaw. Finally, number one, Car Battler Joe. This, in my opinion, has got to be the weirdest and most unknown JRPG of all the Game Boy Advance library. You won't believe this, but it is indeed a role-playing game even though its main controversial attraction is that it has a very peculiar battle system. In terms of gameplay, it plays just like many other RPGs. And in terms of story, it's just yet another average video game. However, just like the title suggests, it's a game with car battles. It looks like a racing game, and it does have some missions including racing, but the main focus is on battling other cars just like inside an arena. You could be thinking that this idea sounds and also seems awesome, but there are several problems, especially going around the controls, that can make your experience become a frustration. Nevertheless, I'm going to recommend this game to you, but only because you need to play it just to say that you played an RPG with cars, racing and fighting. Very unique game, very original. Perhaps with good ideas, but poorly executed. But still silly and fun. Unknown probably due to the strange name and the connection between two different genres in the craziest way. Okay guys, that's it. Um, I didn't know there were so many Game Boy Advance JRPGs before, like I mentioned in the Hidden Gems video. I thought there were only like 10 or 20, but turns out I managed to make two full videos out of them, out of games that are not Fire Emblem or Pokemon or whatever. So um, that's it, as usual, and I, like I said at the beginning of this video, share your opinion, share what, what, what games you consider hidden gems, what games you consider terrible, uh, do you agree if these games are unknown or not, the usual stuff, you know the deal. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time.